What up guys, welcome back to the DIY channel. Uh, today I'm gonna be upgrading my copper coil or my condensing coil for my homemade steel. Uh, you guys all seen the video on how to make one of these. They've been around for about, I don't know, 50 years. People been using them. Right now there's a big debate on whether you should use the brass fitting or not. Uh, it doesn't really have that much surface area. Uh, the alcohol's barely touching it and you're not getting much corrosion. However, just because there is such a debate over it, I'm going to change it out to stainless steel. They're really not that much more expensive. So basically, I'm going to just change out my brass fitting. I'm going to rebend a new copper coil. Uh, this one's been being used for about five years now, and it's just not fast enough. This is a 1 8 line. I'm going to jump to a 1 4 or a quarter inch line. And then that way it can have a little bit better flow, I'm hoping. Um, basically, this is just any old pot. It don't matter what material it's made out of as long as it holds water and can handle heat pretty well. Uh, the alcohol doesn't ever touch this pot. It's just going to run through this coil down to the bottom, then come out the side where you can put your moonshine jar right up underneath of it and collect your alcohol. This is a runoff drain line so when you're adding ice to keep it cold uh, you can drain it away from the table there's usually a hose here with a fitting but I don't got that hooked on here for now because I got to take it apart but uh, basically we're going to show you guys how I make a copper coil or a condensing coil and then we may upgrade the pot size because this is pretty small and we have a lot of alcohol to do this year we're going to do about you know 40 gallons so uh, this is pretty small to do 40 gallons with so I might upgrade the size. We'll see when we get to that But basically you need this to be stainless steel and not aluminum uh, You want everything in the kettle to be stainless to copper so the brass is a big you know Debate on whether that's good or bad even though it's got tiny surface area I'm still gonna change it anyways just to keep all the haters on it's on YouTube here from complaining so uh, I get a lot of complaints and crying and people, you can't do this, you can't, you know what, these have been used for a long time. People have been doing this back country, half of the steels you see are made like this. So, not everybody can bend and solder copper, plus this is just simple and easy to do at home. Uh, we even used it to make lots of extractions for cannab uh, cannabis oils, all kinds of different uh, concentrated oils. You can do lots of things with the steel. and. You know, for around 20 bucks, 30 bucks at any Goodwill or you go to your local Walmart, you could pick up half this stuff. Uh, the coffee can, you know, you recycle coffee cans all day long. Might as well save one to set your pot on. Uh, it makes it real nice for your uh, collection jar to sit under. So that's basically it. We're going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and bend the coil. Uh, I'll show you guys how I do that and then uh, we'll move on. So there's my new one that I just made using my kids Marvel Ritz can. Uh, I'm gonna just leave it like this for now. I don't need to get too crazy on the shapes because I still gotta bend it to be able to fit into my kettle. And I'm not quite sure how I want my length on the end yet. So for now, I'm just gonna go ahead and deconstruct this one here. As you can see, I got a support wire going across the top. So the first thing I wanna do is remove that then get away with removing all of this JB Weld down here that you can see. That's JB Weld. It comes off pretty easy with a razor knife, so that's probably what I'll use to take it off. Uh, it doesn't actually touch any of the alcohol, but it's really strong, and it also seals. And it does a lot better through temperature variations than silicone or anything like that. So I'm going to replace it with JB Weld since this held up for so long and so many years. That seems like a good choice to me. Um, I could solder it, but I just don't even want to waste the time. So we'll just go ahead and do that. See, this is JB Welded as well, and it never leaks. So that's what we'll do for that. So I'm going to go ahead and start tearing this part, get it cleaned, and then move on from there. Well, got the old coil out. Pretty simple. And uh, it actually came out a lot easier than I thought it was gonna. This JB Weld just cut real easy, so that's nice to know. Makes it real simple to change them out. And realistically, this is like eight bucks in copper, so if you didn't want to clean them, you could go ahead and just go buy yourself a new piece of copper coil every year, bend it, 
put it in, boom, run some clean copper. I mean, you still have to run a cleaning batch through it of some vinegar or something, but yeah. I mean, if you didn't want to have to clean these things, that's one cheater way. Recycle this, get a new one. Uh, that's the piece of foam that was in the bottom. I always put a piece of foam in the bottom so the actual copper coil doesn't touch the bottom of the kettle. Uh, it helps keep the temperatures segregated a little bit better, but this is just an old, you know, cloning cap off of an easy cloner, <laughs> but it works. Uh, it keeps it off the bottom and it's a piece of condensed foam so it doesn't compress real easy. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and get me a quarter inch drill bit, ream that hole, get my copper coil in there, restring my uh, piece of wire across the top that help keeps it strong and sturdy so it doesn't break the seal. And yeah, we'll get that done and then move on from there. All right, got it done. As you can see, we got it all nice and JB welded. It holds water, got the coil in it, got it bent. Uh, we'll adjust it to fit this. Got the hose on there for draining off the water, plus the ball valve. So the next step is going to be removing this compression fitting and replacing it with the one I got offline off Amazon. Stainless steel, so you guys all can see that. So I'm going to go ahead and start tearing this apart, get it replaced with the stainless steel one, and we'll go from there. Okay, there it is. Got it handled, got my compression fitting on. That right there, I don't know if you guys can see that. That is a black solvent safe rubber grommet. Uh, doesn't really get much surface area. I used the back of the nut for the back side and then just tighten it down until it gets really tight. Uh, that will not ensure a solid seal. Uh, that helps stop the seal and most of the time it doesn't leak, but if it ever does, there's a quick trick uh, I prefer this rice cereal uh, by Gerber, but you use this, you mix a little water with it, use it as a paste, and as the steel starts to heat up, it dries it out like glue. The, um, what do you call, cream of wheat and the oatmeal work really good as well because this is refined to a powder. It gives you a real smooth consistency, much better than grains and things like that. So, plus it's safe and it won't make the alcohol taste like crap. But this Gerber baby food, it makes for a great sealer if your seal starts to leak. So now that I got that done, the steel's ready to go. I'm just going to give it all a good scrub down and then get ready for my vinegar, uh, distilled vinegar run where it cleans all the copper and everything out of the inside. Then I'll do a quick little baby water rinse and make sure there's no vinegar left in it. And then we're off to the races and running. Uh, for now, I'll go ahead and show you guys my mash and how far we got on that. It's just about done, so it should be ready to go. All right, so I'm doing my vinegar run indoors. It's really cold outside, and this is not flammable when you're doing the vinegar, so the only real concern is to not overflow the pot in your house, but these have, uh, what do you call, weighted uh, pressure detectors on them, so... What happens is this is a blow valve. If it did really get too much pressure, it would start to blow out of this way before these things ever blew up. So they're very safe. But this is a good time to check for leaks and make sure you run it to see if it's leaking anywhere, address any of those issues, or uh, what do you call, solvent uh, proof rubber grommet with our stainless steel compression fitting worked out really well. We come over here and I just wanna show you guys when you run this vinegar, you could see the end result, how clear that is. And then this is what it looks like when it's running. I don't know if you could see that neon blue. That's removing all the heavy metals or corrosion that might have happened on the copper. And you should really make sure you guys do that. I don't know if you could see how blue that is in this video or not, but clear compared to blue. So that's why you guys gotta make sure you run distilled vinegar through your steel before you start running it especially if it's sat for a while I mean it's one thing if you're constantly running but when you're done and you put it away and you come back to it a year later or whatever you have to clean it you could check out our videos how to run and maintain a steel I'll put a link in the description or at the end of this video for that but now that I'm done running it I'm gonna rinse it really good with clean water Make sure it dries out and then start getting my mash over to the, to the pot and get it running. So here we have uh, both of our 
five gallon water bottles that we made carboys out of and we did this just by using the caps that they came with with some black flexible hose we made sure they're tight with some electrical tape and then put them inside of a mason jar with some water that's to keep fungus gnats from coming back at it but these are real cheap to do this way they don't need to be made out of glass you could do it in the plastic bottles they're food grade uh, you see the bubbles popping that's from adding the yeast with the sugar it helps get it accelerating really quick we're gonna let this go and uh, we'll see how long it goes for but right now it's popping away so we're gonna let it do its thing and we'll get back to it when it's done so it's been about three weeks and it's still popping bubbles this is one of the longest batches I've ever had go so we're gonna let it keep going and uh, we'll see how long it actually takes. Uh, normally it's about 10 days, but so far this one's been going for a long time. And maybe it's because we got such ripe apples that had a much higher sugar content. But we'll see how she turns out. She's uh, nice and, you know, not cold, but warm. So we'll let her go. All right, so as you can see, the bubbling is slowing down to an extremely slow pace. I mean, it could be five, 10 minutes before a bubble pops, which tells me this mash is pretty much done. It's been exactly 18 days. So we're gonna let it go, go ahead and get it on out of here, get it to the steel and start running our apple shine. Can't wait for this one. All right, so I got my mash here. I'm gonna go ahead and pop my lid off. You can already start to smell, it's real strong. I'm gonna pour it into my kettle. I'll show you guys about how much you want to put in there and it don't matter that it's got chunks and all that none of that matters because uh you're gonna you're gonna end up um cooking this down and then just throwing whatever scraps are in it and what's left over in the tails out so i like to go to about right a little over halfway right there that's my favorite spot so I want to stay about three four inches away from the top and that's because on the inside of my lid here it's got the valve that sits about right here and I don't want stuff to boil up into it so I make sure that I stay about you know three four inches off the top so I'm gonna go ahead and get this outside to where I'm gonna run my steel and uh, we'll get burning all right up and running I'm all plugged in Got my steel on top of my double burner over here. It's kind of dark in here, sorry about the light. Got my baby cereal in case anything leaks on my crock pot that goes over to my copper coil or my condensing coil. Got my hose that runs down. When I add ice or water, I can drain it into this bucket and dump it outside. This gives me some protection against the wind and fungus gnats. And I got my collection jar and then I got my storage jars. So as it comes out, the first thing I'm going to do is remove the heads. You have three parts to steal in, heads, hearts, and tails. You keep the hearts and the tails, but you're ditching these heads. So you're going to get about two shot glasses or so out of it, ditch it, keep the rest. Uh, I like to taste it every now and then, and then once it starts to get down towards the tails and it's more watery, I'm going to go ahead and segregate those off, and then I can mix it later to get the taste I like. There she goes, she just started to pop. So it's gonna start kicking now. Now is where I'm gonna start getting ready to ditch my bads, my heads, and only save my hearts and my tails. I can smell that all the way over here. It smells so sweet and greatness. And it's gonna do this for a while as it cycles to get up to temp, but yeah, pretty jazzed. Finally got it to kick. So I got this old table tiki torch and I think I'm going to use that and save all my heads every time I do my runs and put them in this right here just so I can use it for a table torch later. And that way I know not to drink it. <laughs> but I don't want to see it to go to waste because it could be used as paint thinners, all kinds of things. So there it is. I'm going to go ahead and get that cleared out. That's about enough of the heads right there. Got a nice good run and I'm going to ditch it. So. Off to saving the hearts. So it's running pretty good now. And I'm collecting. I already put some in the jar. Plus I got my heads over there. 
but yep now it's kicking off I'm gonna just sit here and collect until it starts to get weak then I'll separate it out but gotta just add water to the kettle and keep dumping my bucket real simple and easy yeah there it goes can't wait to see what we get out of this but I can already tell you right now just from tasting it it is f really good might call this one apple pie or something I don't know but it's a real sweet aftertaste very smooth okay so here's the final yield I want to show you guys this is the hearts and this is the tails this is really really strong and I mean exceedingly strong and this starts to get pretty watery near the end so this is all the yield you get for this pot filled about three quarters full. So if you think about it, I mean, that's your return. The rest is going to be water and liquids that wasn't converted to alcohol. That takes a lot longer to burn off. But I don't know if this is a great yield or not for this pot size, but it takes five runs just to do one five gallon um, carboy full of mash. So you see why I want a bigger steel. So something I wanna point out real quick, I run this every year at the same time. It's always the same cold temperatures outside. And I've noticed that by changing over to this bigger copper coil or condensing coil, uh, I could run it at a lot higher temperatures. Matter of fact, I have to just to get it to go. And it goes a lot faster. Before it would take me a little over three hours. Now I'm down to about two hours. So I just wanted to point that out, just something to talk about real quick because uh, this larger size coil does speed it up quite a bit. So I'm pretty thankful for that. So if you guys want to speed up your coil or speed up your steel from the original steel that I showed you guys how to make, all you got to do is change out that compression fitting and your copper and boom, you're done. And like I said, I'll make sure I put all the links in the description below for all these items especially that stainless steel compression fitting that's probably the most crucial item so you want to make sure you get that but i got lots of running to do so i'm going to keep on going yeah it is slow it takes a lot of time to do it like this with a small kettle size but i could sit here and watch this all day long i don't know about you guys and the smell is just unreal so it's worth it for me but I'm just sitting here collecting. I'm already ditched my heads into the jar over there and I'm going for the hearts right now on the second batch. Can't wait to see how much I get out of all this, but no matter what, it makes great Christmas gifts and something fun to drink. So I'm gonna just sit here and keep going at it. I'm not gonna film every batch, but I just wanted to show you guys the difference between the first batch and the second batch on the hearts and then here's the tails first batch second batch and you can see it's pretty close and why we only get about a gallon and a half to two gallons out of five gallons so i'm not going to record every single one but there it is all right so done with about eight to ten gallons each one of these drums were filled to about right here so anywhere from eight to ten gallons out of two of these and we received our heads that's how much heads there is and this is how much of the hearts there is this is hearts uncut and then this is the tails right here. I got these two jars of tails. So we don't really like to cut ours. I mean, you can, we like it the way it is. We sip on it. So it's just like stuff we like to give out every year. It's super strong that way and high proof. But if you did want to water it down, the trick would be to take some of the good stuff and then slowly add your tails to it until you get it at the consistency you want but you can see how clear this is i don't know if, if you can see how this got a light fog to it once it starts getting near the end it starts to kick out a little fogginess so idealistically i'm going to go rerun this and try to get more hearts and less tails because that's a lot of tells and I'd like to rerun it and try to make it as strong as the rest of this. But I thank you guys for joining me in this video. You guys watched me upgrade my steel. 
got go a lot faster. It's actual time is under two hours. It's about an hour and 40 minutes, hour and 35 minutes on average. So that's a lot better than three hours the way it was running before. And I'm, I'm really happy with it. So again, thank you for joining me. Be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. And uh, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Have a good one.